Okay, you know we had to talk about this. This was popping off on social media yesterday, and it got a lot of Canucks fans worried. So we're bringing the topic here on the channel and trying to give our thoughts as to whether or not this actually is a big deal, how some concerns have manifested from this interview, and what we could see in the future of Vancouver Canucks hockey in regards to Elias Pedersen. So, our source today comes from an article published by Ian McIntyre on Sportsnet.ca. Take a look at this. This was from January 16th, so yesterday all the quotes were posted on the Twitter and everybody was freaking out about it. But the article goes as follows. Q&A with Canucks GM Patrick Alvin on Pedersen, Kuzmenko, and being known as Trader Pat. Now, McIntyre does a lot of good work. He gets interviews, and he does very nice articles about these interviews. So if you're familiar with Ian's work, you'll know exactly how this article is structured. And believe me, there is a lot of good material in this. The article will be linked in the description if you want to go ahead and see more about what Patrick Alvin thinks about certain things. But the Elias Pedersen conversation got a lot of people up in arms, because if we scroll down into what iMac goes out there and asks about PD. Here is how the conversation begins. Is there any change in Elias Pettersson's situation? Any sign of negotiations resuming? Alvin says this, I've had conversations with his agent, but nothing obviously has changed. We want to keep Petey here, and he knows that. At some point, it's going to come down to negotiations and if it's working or not. We have another year with him as an RFA. We're not going to lose him this summer. But that being said, I'm trying to plan for our team this year and next year, and I want him to be a big part of it. Based on your experience, iMac asks, is this situation unusual? A core player eligible for RFA status wanting to hold off negotiations? Maybe a little bit. Yeah, Alvin says. Editor's note, Agent Pat Brisson also told Sportsnet that he planned to discuss options with Pedersen and didn't rule out negotiations restarting before the end of the season. So that note is a very big note because it goes out there and calms down a lot of what Canucks fans were worried about. But just going over the situation here, PD is an RFA, we know this, he is expiring at the end of this year, we know this, he is on pace for 108 points this season. We talked about this in the video just a few hours ago with Pedersen, Miller, Kane, and Daniel Sprong. But I will say it is very intriguing how this conversation has proceeded, because at the beginning of the season, everybody was kind of like, okay, it's fair that Elias Pedersen is a little bit wary on wanting to resign. Like, he wants to commit to a winner, and he wants to make sure the Canucks are going to be that, because last year they sucked at the beginning of the year, and their highest paid player, JT Miller, was under a lot of scrutiny because he had this attitude issue, and he couldn't backcheck, and Demko was hurt, and he wasn't doing all too well, and the team was blowing all these leads, and Bruce Boudreaux, the catastrophe over there. Everybody was freaking out about it, but everybody knew that, yeah, there's a benefit of the doubt there that is more than fair when it comes to the Canucks potentially not being a quote-unquote contender. So for Petey to hold out, that's fine. But as the team started winning, as the team started to exhibit more success, as it got to a point now where even in this same article, if we talk about Patrick Alvin and his idea of maybe getting a little bit more out of the team, he says this, I think I owe it to the players to be aggressive ahead of the trade deadline. We know that they're capable of playing at this high level, and if they continue to do that, it's on me to support them and give them opportunities to be successful. Patrick Alvin even admitted to Ian McIntyre that, yeah, we might just go all in. We have the potential to do that. That's an option here. So for Elias Pettersson, being one of the main cogs on a team that quote unquote can go all in, there is probably more reason to believe that the Canucks can remain competitive. Even if they're not, like, top of the league every single year, they'll still be, like, good. So for Elias Pettersson, having this idea where it's like, yeah, he wants to re-sign with a winner, now we kind of are seeing the Vancouver Canucks be a winner. So where do we go from here? Well, I'll tell you, Arfan Gafar had this bit on Sportsnet 650 earlier yesterday. He said, there's something not quite right here. If you can do it, why hasn't it been done yet? Satyar Shah and Arfan Gafar then say, the Canucks don't even know if Pedersen wants to sign. I'm not even sure if his agent knows. Now, this is where we get into the 
editor's note that we talked about from the Sportsnet piece that Brisson told Sportsnet he planned to discuss options with PD. So that probably is a good update in regards to calming some Canucks fans' nerves because just acknowledging that there hasn't really been any updates. I mean, we've got the Sportsnet radio guys going out there and saying, yeah, this is like unusual. It's not quite right. The fact that Alvin even said, yeah, it's a little unusual that an RFA has held out for this long, it is kind of raising some eyebrows, and you can go out there and expect more conversations about this. Take a look at this tweet made by Chris Kant that got a lot of attention yesterday, too. Friendly reminder, Elias Pettersson and his agent can eliminate all the speculation and distraction by engaging in extension conversations with the Canucks management or by stating they'll work towards an agreement in the offseason. Chester Ming then replies, I don't think they're trying to dissipate speculation. That's clearly not their primary concern here. Grady had another reply here that I thought was interesting. I don't get the angst over the Elias Pettersson contract stuff. He told us at the start of the season he wanted to see how things play out before signing, and that's happening now. The season is going extremely well, so no need to panic. Both parties know roughly what it will cost. And you know how I made that video a few weeks ago saying that Elias Pettersson is not worth the money? Like, that was a really good one, I felt. And it was one where we had a lot of people in the comments agreeing. We had good conversation going on about Pettersson not being worth $12 million a year. Like, sure, the thumbnail and the title, you know, was all there. But I was saying, right, like, this is a guy who, based off of his play, was not playing at a $12 million caliber at that time of the season. He was still producing points, but we all felt that there was more to his game. He would get a point a game, great, but he was getting knocked off the puck. He lost a lot of that pizzazz. He didn't shoot the puck as much as he could have. Well, guess what? Ever since the new year, here's a crazy stat that might blow your mind. Elias Pettersson has taken his game to a new level in this new year. As the stats shows, he ranks at the top of several key categories amongst NHL players so far this month. Amongst all NHL players, Elias Pettersson is first since January 1st in goals, in even strength points, game-winning goals, tied for first in points, and he's tied for first in plus minus. He has been doing amazing things ever since the turn of the new year, and this is more so of the PD that we feel is worth that $12 million price tag. Nylander just got 11 points something, PD could get more than that. That completely contradicts the video we made a few weeks ago saying he's not worth it, but hey, he's playing better now. We're seeing it. And it wasn't even just me. Like, back when we made that video last time, it was like, yeah, a lot of the comments were like, he's playing like a $7 million guy, $8 million guy. Like, like, does he deserve to be making more than Miller? Who knows? Now, we do have ourselves another thing that just popped up on my Twitter feed right now as I'm recording this audio. Here's a Frank Saravelli bit from about an hour ago, actually, on Sakaris and Price, where he goes out there and says this about the EP situation. The problem is... Elias Pettersson has not given any signals. The Canucks are just kind of being stiff-armed. He's made himself a lot more money this year by playing it out. When your mission and mandate is to play in an absolute contender and you want to be on the best team possible, well, you can do your team a huge favor and provide them the proper roadmap necessary to get where they want to go by signing sooner rather than later. I understand why the Canucks are getting antsy. They're itching to get this done. And that is a brilliant point that I had not even considered in this entire Pettersson conversation. If he plays so good gosh darn well that he's a $13 million player by the end of the year, then the Canucks have no choice but to give him that money. Okay, great. They give him as much dollars as he wants because he's Elias freaking Pedersen, but that hurts the team more than helps them. And if Elias Pedersen wants to stay in a contender, it's probably in his best interest to take less dollars so the team has more money to improve their roster elsewhere. Not that EP is not worth whatever money that he's going to get, but that Pedersen at a discount, plus another depth piece like a Dakota Joshua or a Sam Lafferty or somebody else in that mold that can help the team in that way, that is more valuable, and that will help the team remain more competitive. So there is sort of a philosophical clashing here between what Pedersen wants as an individual making money and what Pedersen wants as a team player on a winning squad. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. How do you feel about this entire Pedersen controversy? We're talking about this now because it was a big deal yesterday. It's been kind of expanding more so as the day has gone on. But what are your thoughts on Pedersen's contract negotiations? Do you think the contract gets done soon? How much do you think it's going to be for? And how much do you think he really is worth? Thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this British Irish Rolls 99. And bye.